Haiti is once again in the news, and once again, there is open talks about another U.S. military intervention in Haiti as the country continues to remain in crisis. The current acting prime minister of Haiti, Ariel Henry, has been openly asking and requesting that the United States intervene in Haiti. On the other hand, a lot of Haitians, both in Haiti and Haitians who live in the United States, are protesting against this. It seems that the United States does have some hesitations about going on a full-on military intervention in Haiti. And why is that? Well, we have to discuss the history of American military intervention in Haiti and how they have really failed to produce any lasting results. The legacy of U.S. military interventions goes back over a hundred years ago. There are videos on YouTube who have talked about specific U.S. military interventions in Haiti. And in my video, I want to do a condensed video of the overall interventions and invasions of Haiti by the United States. There are other um, YouTube channels out there, history ones, who have talked about, for example, the U.S. invasion of Haiti in 1915, the U.S. occupation lasted until 1934, or the 1994 intervention in Haiti. So, let's do a condensed version that goes, you know, the 1915 invasion of Haiti, the 1994 U.S. intervention in Haiti, and the 2004 U.S intervention in Haiti and the brief 2010 U.S. humanitarian uh, mission in Haiti in 2010 after the earthquake. Those were the major U.S. interventions in Haiti. The very first U.S. military invasion of Haiti took place in 1915. It was in that year that Haitian dictator Vilburn Guillaume Sam ended up being killed by the Haitian people. President Sam ruled Haiti from February 1915 until July 1915. His short-lived dictatorship was very repressive, and he executed at least 167 Haitians who opposed him, and he was a U.S. ally. Eventually, he ended up being killed by the Haitian people when he tried running to the French embassy, but the Haitian people caught him, and they did brutally murder him and tore him apart. Literally, his body was ripped apart. The United States did not like his assassination and feared Haitian instability and it, what it would do to American business interests in Haiti. So President Woodrow Wilson ordered an American military invasion of Haiti. The U.S. military invaded, and any Haitians who re resisted the U.S. invasion were killed and shot by the U.S. military. The U.S. economic interests in Haiti include the sugar industry, molasses, fruit like bananas and so forth, and the U.S. wanted total control of it, and instability was bad for that. So the U.S., when it invaded in 1915, ended up occupying Haiti until 1934. The occupation lasted for 19 years. During those 19 years, the United States completely rewrote Haiti's constitution and took control of Haiti's banks and financial institutions and also decided to redo Haiti's education system. And any Haitians who resisted the U.S. occupation of Haiti over those 19 years were regularly killed by the occupying U.S. Marines. There was one infamous incident in 1929 called Les Cayes Massacre, 
where over 20 Haitian protesters protesting in front of the U.S. Marines for the occupation ended up being shot and killed by the U.S. Marines. The U.S. Marines and other soldiers stationed in Haiti during those 19 years did commit lots of human rights abuses and acted in excess and acted as hooligans and there were cases of sexual assaults of Haitian women by U.S. soldiers in Haiti. It was really atrocious and terrible and left an ugly legacy and even the U.S. Congress by 1930 concluded that the U.S. occupation of Haiti was a total failure and that Haiti, that the U.S. failed to understand Haiti's social political problems. The Great Depression of 1929, the stock market crash, ended up causing the United States to run out of money. And so the U.S. ended up having to pull out of Haiti during the 1930s. Another thing I want to briefly mention is at the same time of the U.S. invasion and occupation of Haiti, the United States also invaded Haiti's neighbor, the Dominican Republic, which is on the same island as Haiti, the island of Hispaniola. The U.S. invaded the Dominican Republic in 1916 and occupied the country till 1924, which lasted eight years. And the occupation of the Dominican Republic lasted a shorter amount of time compared to the U.S. occupation of Haiti. After the 1934 pullout of Haiti, the United States continued to back a series of puppet dictators, including the infamous Duvalier's, Papa Doc and Baby Doc, Francois Duvalier, who ruled Haiti from 1957 till his death in 1971, and then his son Jean-Claude Duvalier, known as Baby Doc, who ruled from 1971 until he fled the country in 1986. During those 29 years, the United States gave a lot of support, financial aid to their dictatorship, U.S. military aid, and trained Haitian soldiers, and <clears throat> the death squads of the Duvalier's, and... That terror and repression forced lots of Haitians to flee during those 29 years. The next major U.S. military intervention in Haiti was in 1994. And in that case, it was in response to when there was a brutal military dictatorship in Haiti, which lasted from 1991 to 1994, when... Haiti's first freely elected president, Jean Bertrand Aristide, a Catholic priest, was overthrown from power by the Haitian army in September 1991 because the Haitian army didn't like his reforms. So General Raoul Cedros and Philippe Biombi, who were both trained by the U.S. military, both of them were graduates of U.S army training. They overthrew President Aristide in September 1991 and installed a, another brutal military junta who ruled Haiti for three years from 1991 to 1994. And as a result of that brutal military junta, it produced lots of Haitian refugees. It was a total crisis. The United States eventually got tired of dealing with it and the United States wanted the Haitian military junta to step down from power. So in 1994, the U.S. military arrived in Haiti. They forced the military dictators of Haiti to step down from power. General Raul Cedros was escorted out of the country and went to Panama with his family, where they live to this day. The U.S. military... Um, decided to do police actions in Haiti in 1994 and 1995 to quote-unquote restore order in Haiti and doing arrests of some of the different people who were involved in the military junta of Haiti 
and the United States put President Jean-Bertrand Aristide back in power to finish his term. The U.S. ended up leaving by 1995, and this operation also involved the United Nations, and the United Nations troops also went into Haiti along with the U.S. military. This intervention produced very short-lived results. The third major military operation of the United States in Haiti was called Operation Secure Tomorrow, which took place in 2004, when President Jean-Bertrand Aristide decided to run for president again in the year 2000, he won. But the United States claimed that he was illegitimate and that the election was rigged. So Jean-Bertrand Aristide's presidency from 2001 to 2004 was problematic. The United States froze all American foreign aid going to Haiti during his three years in office from 2001 to 2004. And former members of the Haitian army who despised Aristide formed paramilitary groups and fought an insurgency against Jean Aristide's government from 2001 to 2004. The United States didn't intervene at all to stop the insurgency and violence, but let it go on and get more and more out of control. And eventually, by February 2004, Aristide was in fear of his life, that the insurgent paramilitaries were going to enter into the presidential palace and kill him, and the United States refused to intervene unless he resigned. So in February 2004, Aristide resigned, and the U.S. military ended up putting him on a plane and flew him to exile in Africa. And then the U.S. Marines were sent in to Haiti in February 29, 2004, and remained there to July 2004, and it was called Operation Secure Tomorrow, and the United States engaged in more police operations in Haiti and now going after the different Haitian paramilitary groups and installing a new interim government in Haiti. And this left mixed results at best. It didn't really fix Haiti's problems. Haiti was far too broken at this point to really try to undo all the damage in chaos and anarchy. In January 2010 was the earthquake in Haiti, and the United States military did a limited intervention where they sent U.S. military to Haiti to hand out and distribute humanitarian aid to the Haitian people, and it was a limited operation. The U.S. really had no stomach or willingness, really, to get that much involved. And so, beyond giving out humanitarian assistance, uh, that was it. And then the U.S. troops ended up leaving after that. But the damage done from the earthquake was really never dealt with. And Haiti's still dealing with the consequences of that earthquake to this day.